Hello everyone and welcome to my first What If video. What if Deathbringer was sent to the Lost Continent instead of Moonwatcher? This video contains spoilers for Arc 3 and uh, well, let's get into it. I can't do this, Deathbringer said. I need to keep you safe. I'll be fine, Glory said. I can keep myself safe. Besides, you shouldn't be gone for long. Isn't this what you always wanted? This is your chance to change the world for the better. Deathbringer sighed. I'll miss you when I'm gone. Gloria's scales turned pink and yellow for a split second, then she forced them back to their normal green and blue color. You won't be completely alone. You'll have a team of nine other dragons and a human. Deathbringer shuddered. A human, he muttered. I'll never get over the fact that they can talk. Those things freak me out. Be careful what you say around them, Gloria reprimanded. They have feelings, too. Deathbringer nodded. Of course. Let's go, I suppose. He wrapped his wings around her, and for once, she didn't pull away. He rested his head on her shoulder. He stepped back, and the two of them took to the skies, flying towards the spot where they would be meeting the rest of their team. Soon, they landed near the nine other dragons and the human. Deathbringer walked up to them. Greetings, he said. I'm ready for the mission. He turned to Glory. I'll see you when I've saved the world. Glory nodded. Good luck. This time she was the one to hug him. Please don't get yourself killed. I... Just be careful, okay? Deathbringer smiled. Of course. He turned to his team as Glory returned to the sky. So, what's the plan? A Sandwing steps forward. Let's start by introducing ourselves. My name is Kibley. I am Lynx, said the Icewing. I am Pineapple, said the Rainwing. I am Bullfrog, said the Mudwing. I am Luna, said the strange four-winged dragon with antenna and shiny green scales. I am Cricket, said the golden and black four-winged dragon. I am Sundew, said the green dragon with leaf-shaped wings. I am Tsunami, said the Seawing, but you know who I am. I'm Sky, said the Skywing. I'm Red, said the human, making Deathbringer cringe. And you are? My name is Deathbringer, he said. Wait, said Ren. I recognize that name. Could it be? Murder Basket? Deathbringer jumped. It's you, he exclaimed. I thought... You thought I was some twisted fragment of your imagination, didn't you? Ren said. I am very much real. It's been so long since we last met. How long ago was it? Three years? Four? Deathbringer nodded. I think so. Kibley cleared his throat. So you two know each other? Deathbringer shrugged. It's a long story from a long time ago. Kibley nodded. Shall we be underway then? Deathbringer nodded. Let's go. The team took off into the skies, flying towards the lost continent, towards their doom. Three days later, Deathbringer soared up in the sky beside his ten allies. He was reluctant to talk to them. He didn't want to get attached, just in case any of them died. Pineapple, Lynx, and Tsunami flew forward towards a nearby island that they would rest at, and Deathbringer hung back with the others. He glanced over at Sundu, who had the gift of self on her wrists. Something to make you invisible, he thought to himself. That would have been quite useful for me during my assassin days. Suddenly, a scream sliced through the air. Deathbringer swooped forward as Sundu turned their team invisible. He landed to see Tsunami and Kibli fighting Hive Wings. A hive wing was already down from Pineapple's sleeping dart, and as son er, Deathbringer threw himself into the fray, he saw two more drop down, clutching their necks. Deathbringer slashed with his claws, but he was reluctant to use his throwing discs. He heard a hissing voice say, There's another dragon here, one we cannot see, possibly more. Suddenly, the hive wings lunged towards a spot on the sand, and Pineapple appeared, showing colors of white and green. A hive wing hit him over the head with a rock knocking him out. A purple and gold dragon with an antenna on his head descended from the sky, landing on the sand. A Silkwing, Luna yelled. He can see your movement, even if you're invisible. Everyone freeze. Deathbringer froze, but not in time. The Silkwing held out his talons, and long silvery threads wrapped themselves around Deathbringer. He glanced around, seeing that Kibli, Lynx, Tsunami, and Pineapple had already been taken by the enemy. Deathbringer knew that he would be captured soon, too, if he didn't act fast. He drew a throwing disc, sliced through his bindings, and threw the disc into the neck of the possessed Silkwing, ending his life. Even without being able to see himself, his muscle memory was perfect. No! Luna yelled, and Deathbringer felt a twinge of guilt. I shouldn't have done that, he thought to himself. But what choice did I have? I would have been captured otherwise. I need to sa sacrifice the few for the good of the many. If I got captured, we might have failed our mission. He dove out of the way of the Hive Wings as they tried to tackle him. He scrambled away as they searched for him. Suddenly, a voice called out to them. 
We'll never find them now, said Wasp. Let's take the prisoners and go. Thank goodness, Deathbringer thought. The Hivelings grabbed Pineapple, Kibli, Lynx, and Tsunami and took to the skies. Deathbringer walked out to the middle of the island as Sundew, Sky, Luna, Cricket, and Bullfrog landed beside him. Deathbringer noticed the Silkwing corpse shift as though someone was examining it. He's dead, whispered Luna's voice. You killed him. I had no choice, Deathbringer said. I'm really sorry. Are you though? Luna snapped. You're an assassin. You kill without thought. Murder without pity. Why should I believe that this is any different? Would you have cared so much if he was a hive wing? Deathbringer asked. Luna was silent, and Deathbringer knew he had struck a nerve. That's enough, you two, Cricket said. We can't turn in each other. Not now. We have to work together. Deathbringer nodded. I know, I know. What should we do now? Sundu asked. Should we try to get our friends back, or should we continue without them? I say we rescued them, said Luna. Me too, Sky said. And me, Sundu said. Who thinks we should stick with the original plan and go find the Abyss? Me, Cricket and Bullfrog said together. Same here, Deathbringer said. So it's a tie, Sundu said with a sigh. Ahem, said Ren's little human voice. I'm here too, and I say we stick with the original plan and go find the Abyss. I'd rather not take Sky into a swarm of mind-controlled dragons. But what about when you came to save me in the Kingdom of Sand? We need to rescue our friends, no matter the cost. Alright, here's what we're going to do, Sundu said with authority. I'm going to take Deathbringer, and we're going to try to get, go try to get our friends back. If it seems too difficult, then we won't risk it. But we'll take as many sleeping darts as we can carry, and we'll do our best. Deathbringer contemplated the plan. Sounds good to me, he said. So it's settled then, Sundu said. Let's go. Sundu took off into the sky, and Deathbringer followed close behind. Deathbringer and Sundu stood outside Wasp Hive. Follow my voice as we make our way inside, Sundu said. I've been following your voice this entire way, Deathbringer said. Just keep following me, Sundu said, her voice coming from further ahead. They can't hear us, so don't worry about that. Deathbringer kept following her as they made their way into the hive. He spotted a silkwing and he took out his blowgun, but then he realized that she probably couldn't detect his movement with all the hive wings and silkwings all over the place. The two of them crept through the hive, and Deathbringer thought back to the old days during his time as an assassin. Those days were fun, but I'm so glad I met Glory. I wouldn't go back, even if I had the choice. Deathbringer smiled and his, his glory has entered his mind. I'm so glad I met her. I'd be a lot worse off without her. Deathbringer remembered what life was like before he met Glory. His mind had, filled, had been filled with dark, occasionally suicidal thoughts. He had wondered if the world would be better off without him, but now he knew the truth. Glory needed him, and the world needed Glory. Therefore, the world needed him. He was making the world a better place, just by protecting the dragon he loved most. Through the window, Sundu called out. Understood, Deathbringer replied as he clambered through an open window. He realized that they were in the palace, meaning they were closer to Queen Wasp. We're in a cramped space, so we should hold talents to stick together, Sundu said. Deathbringer sighed. All right, he agreed. They joined talents and made their way through the palace. They snuck through until they reached the throne room. When they arrived, they saw Lynx, Kibli, Tsunami, and Pineapple, all standing before the throne. They were chained up, but not wide-eyed. At least, not yet. Take them to the dungeons, Wasp hissed. They will spill their secrets. After enough pain, that is. I'll go and rescue them, Deathbringer said. I'll deal with Queen Wasp. What do you mean, Sundu asked. You plan on killing her? Deathbringer smiled to himself. Yes. The breath of evil itself does not control every hive wing, so killing Queen Wasp will get rid of some of its control. That should buy you enough time to escape. Sundu was silent for a moment, then she spoke. Very well, she agreed. Good hunting. Deathbringer couldn't see it, but she had gotten up and walked away. Deathbringer saw that Wasp had Silkwing guards, which meant that they would detect movement. He decided that if he moved slowly enough, they wouldn't see him. He got up and began to slowly inch his way across the room. He felt an hour pass by as he crept ever closer. However, right before he lunged forward, he suddenly became visible. The Silkwings all spun around to face him, then they all attacked at once. Deathbringer lunged for Wasp, but a guard grabbed him. He kicked the guard, drew a throwing disc, and threw it at Wasp. It slashed her throat as it passed by, and all the Hivewing guards all across the continent suddenly dropped to the floor, exhausted beyond measure. 
None of them had slept for days, and now that they were free, they could rest. However, the Soquin guards were still under the control of the original Breath of Evil, and they managed to restrain Deathbringer. I hope Sundu and the others can make it to the Abyss in time, he thought as one of the guards raised the club. The guards bashed him over the head, and everything went black. Deathbringer woke in a bed made from purple cloth. He looked around, seeing Sundew, Lynx, Pineapple, Kibli, Luna, Cricket, Sky, Ren, and Bullfrog all around him. Hey, guys, he muttered. Ah, you're finally awake, Sundew said. You've been out for a while. Thanks to you, we got away in time, and Luna destroyed the Breath of Evil. Where's Tsunami? Deathbringer asked. She's trying to use the, the Dream Visitor to contact our families on Pyria, Pineapple explained. At those words, Tsunami walked in. Deathbringer! Roy told me that she has important news for you. Let's hear it, Deathbringer said. She wanted you to be the first to know, Tsunami explained. Once you're ready, you were to fly back to Pyria and meet her in person. She also didn't want to tell you with the Dream Visitor. She said you, she wanted to be able to tell it, it to you herself. Deathbringer nodded. I'll eat something, then I'll be on my way. Deathbringer woke in a bed made from purple cloth. He looked around, seeing Sundew, Lynx, Pineapple, Kibli, Luna, Cricket, Sky, Ren, and Bullfrog all around him. Hey, guys, he muttered. Ah, you're finally awake, Sundew said. You've been out for a while. Thanks to you, we got away in time, and Luna destroyed the Breath of Evil. Where's Tsunami? Deathbringer asked. She's trying to use the, the Dream Visitor to contact our families on Pyria, Pineapple explained. At those words, Tsunami walked in. Deathbringer! Roy told me that she has important news for you. Let's hear it, Deathbringer said. She wanted you to be the first to know, Tsunami explained. Once you're ready, you were to fly back to Pyria and meet her in person. She also didn't want to tell you with the Dream Visitor. She said you, she wanted to be able to tell it, it to you herself. Deathbringer nodded. I'll eat something, then I'll be on my way. Three days later, Deathbringer soared through the sky. He was close to the Rainwing village, and he had a tingling feeling in his heart as he got closer to the one he loved the most. He quickly spotted her. She was standing atop the Sun Time platform farthest northeast. Her scales were blaze orange, so he could easily see her. He swooped down and landed beside her. Hello, my love, he said. She smiled, which was not her normal reaction to that greeting. I have news for you, she said, smiling widely. What is it? Deathbringer asked. Glory giggled. Then she leaned in close to whisper in his ear. I'm going to have an egg, she whispered. Deathbringer gasped. Really? That's amazing. I knew you'd feel that way, Gloria said. What should we name them? Deathbringer thought. I don't know, I'd have to think about it. How about Firefly? Gloria asked. It's a combination of a Nightwing name and a Rainwing name. What do you think? Deathbringer smiled. It's perfect. Deathbringer flung his wings around Gloria, and the two of them happily sobbed, soon to be parents. So, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I worked pretty hard on this. Uh, it's about 10 pages long. And, um, thank you for, if you are still here, thank you for watching till the end. And, uh, yeah. Have a nice rest of your day, everybody. Peace out, I guess. I don't know. I hope you enjoyed it.